The Habits of Mind are a set of 16 problem-solving, life-related skills designed by Arthur Costa and Ben Akalik. These skills can be applied by both students and teachers in the classroom to enhance learning and better prepare students for life after graduation. At South Fayette High School, the Habits of Mind are in use every day. So here in the Fab Lab, we actually employ all of the Habits of Mind. But what you really get is the ability to be able to innovate, imagine, and create. Students can take anything that they can imagine to be able to solve a real world problem, and they're able to imagine it, design a solution to it, and then come here in the Fab Lab and to be able to create it. So they can go from whatever they've got in their head to a finished product here in the Fab Lab. In video production, we do our share of creating as well. And it's very important that our students work together and think interdependently. From the very first brainstorming session, we want them sharing ideas, communicating, and learning from one another. Especially when they're on set, things can get very chaotic. It's important that they talk to one another and work together as a unit. The stage is somewhere where students can take risks, can overcome maybe a fear that they have of performance, whether that be through the theater, whether that be through music or dance. And when they overcome that fear, they take that risk and they're successful, it really builds their confidence and hopefully will lead to something that they really love to do. Every year I teach a class that puts on our annual mini-thon. And that program is designed to help raise money for kids battling pediatric cancer. The first step in this process is to get our students to buy in and empathize with the kids and the families that are going through this struggle. Uh, we have found that them being able to do that has uh, really caused them to act above and beyond and go out into the community and raise hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the program results have been uh, just incredible and something we're really proud of. Like a lot of technical subjects, coding can be very specific. A semicolon in the wrong spot, using the wrong variable, can completely fail a student's program. We ask that they never give up and they stay persistent in everything they do to give themselves a chance to succeed. In my classroom, we like to have a lot of fun. I like to get the kids up and moving, um, have them do skits, music videos, um, play games, act things out so that they have a smile on their face, so that they're laughing and they're enjoying the material and really like interacting and engaging with this stuff rather than just sitting there and, you know, receiving information. <laughs> Don't listen to her. She knows that we have more fun in Spanish. What I have found to be the most effective way of reaching students is to have them think about their thinking. When you spoon feed students information, let's be real, they're not really listening to anything that you're saying. They figure out they'll learn it later. When students really think about their learning and they think about what they're doing and why, they're more engaged, they understand it better, their scores are better, and it just makes for a better classroom environment. In mathematics, uh, striving for accuracy is the most important thing we do. Uh, when students are striving for accuracy, we are pushing them to check their answers and check their answers again. Um, and if they're still having the issue of accuracy, we're asking them to meet peer to peer so they are constantly improving um, within that habit of mind. While having the right answer is important, what's even more important is the ability to communicate that answer clearly and precisely. Whether it's with your peers in a discussion or through a paper, you have to be able to explain yourself. These are the skills that are most important once you leave the classroom and go into the real world. Precision and clarity. So I would say as much as possible, I really try to get students out of the classroom, even out of the building, and try to allow them to experience the wider world. Probably for me, one of my favorite activities that I do here at the school is the annual Washington DC trip with junior students. And that gives them the opportunity not only to see our nation's capital, but learn more about some of the events that we've been talking about throughout the year. And I know for me, one of my favorite um, sites that we go to is Arlington Cemetery. And when the students see the changing of the guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, and then get to see four of their classes 
classmates lay a wreath at that tomb, I think it really hits home for them, the sacrifices that have been made um, and the impact that um, our nation's military has on keeping us free and keeping us safe as a people. In music, and really in all of the arts, we use our senses as much as possible. I encourage my students to listen to each other and to feel the beat of the music and to be loose and move around in response to what they're hearing. For me, art is remembering that that masterpiece is always around the corner. That's what drives you to grow as an artist. I don't care if you're 14 years old, 18 years old, or 56 years old. You're, you're constantly learning, you're constantly evolving as an artist and a person. So over the last few years, one of the things I've been tasked with doing is bringing real world problems into the classroom. And last year in particular, I had a wonderful experience with students working on a device called LockRx. This device is a timed, lockable pill dispenser that was created in response to the opioid crisis affecting people in Allegheny County. As an educator, watching my students work through a real-world problem that affected actual people in the real world was astounding. To see their level of commitment and professionalism as they continued to tackle obstacles that came up with the design and making of the device, as well as how they dealt with other people that we brought in to assist with our production, was uh, amazing. This really illustrates to me the power of project-based learning in the classroom. At South Fayette High School, we work to consistently put students' needs first. The habits of mind have challenged us to look at education differently. This year's operational theme is ingenuity and flexibility. We have encouraged our staff to reevaluate the way that they traditionally teach, and we've empowered them to incorporate the use of student choice. The results are powerful. Our students are far more engaged and higher level learning is taking place in our classrooms. The habits of mind have been vital to the growth and success of our school district. The incorporation of habits of mind have allowed our teachers to explore new opportunities for student learning and have given our students opportunities to grow and learn in ways that otherwise might not have been possible. The habits of mind has become cultured into the school district and has framed everything that we've done for the last several years. We are proud to be recognized as International Habits of Mind School and look forward to all the wonderful opportunities that the future surely holds.